Okay, intro to the shop update for 11.15. I'm standing over here by the um, rear end of the 1066 tractor. Um, one of the things that a bunch of people have asked me about is this tractor, this 1066. And this project is not dead, it will go on. Um, there's just other things that I need to get done before the tractor. So that haul truck um, needs to be built and gotten on the road and uh, before the tractor. Now, not saying that the tractor is going to be put off all of that time until the haul truck's on the road. I'm just saying that the haul truck and some other things are priority. So um, don't worry, the 1066 is, 1066 is not dead. Um, it's still here and it's going to be completed. Okay, there really wasn't the intro. The, uh, this is going to be the intro. This shop update is going to cover a lot of topics. Uh, I did some work on my truck. I prepped the trailer for a haul. Uh, I've got some tidbits, uh, no video footage, but tidbits about the haul itself. Um, there's going to be discussion about uh, fabricating some stuff, um, some stuff that I bought to make a mold and um, just a whole bunch of topics. Uh, some of the things that are going to be are uh, kind of concerning the haul truck and uh, what I'm going to do is show you ringing out some wires. I'm not going to show you in this video but I'm going to show you my prep for ringing out some wires on that sleeper that I bought. I'm going to show you some fabrication I did on a stand that I was going to build for the front axle of that haul truck to hold it up in the air so that I could uh, pull the wheels and tires off of it and uh, check the brakes uh, and stuff in preparation for putting it on the haul truck but um, you know, it was kind of a fail and I'll explain that in detail further as we get into the video but here we go um, shop update um, I've just got my truck in the shop the amber running light on this side is burned out i'll go turn them on in a minute but the truck is uh an 11 2011 it's 2018 so th the bulbs are seven years old i've never replaced either of the headlight bulbs or any of the the bulbs in front i've replace taillight bulbs but never replace any of the bulbs either turn signal running or headlight bulbs in the front of this vehicle so what i did as long as that bulb was burned out i also got uh, i got both of them so the one for the burned out the uh, one for the other side and i also got two new headlight bulbs as long as i'm going in there might as well replace the bulbs they're gonna burn out eventually and um, usually once they start going they continue to go but let me um, turn you off I'll go turn the running lights on and show you the bulb that's burned out and then what I'm gonna do is turn the headlights on and uh, we'll see if there's any difference in the bulb bulbs uh, with the new headlight bulbs okay so that's what the uh, bulb looked like, the running light bulb looked like, and as you can see, um, this one is burned out. So I'll replace it, but now let me go turn the headlights on. We'll get a shot of what the headlight strength is before and after I replace them. Okay, so there it is, before replacement. And I'm not gonna clean the lenses off uh, just so that you get a a good result on what it is. I'll uh, clean it off afterwards. Okay, um, there it is after the bulbs were replaced. Um, it, to me, it looks brighter. It, uh, it really does, but I'll see once I see it in the video if it uh, actually is or not. Let me tell you, what I'll do is I'll bring you back. I had a hell of a time getting the light bulbs in there um, back into the sockets. Uh, the first light bulb that I had, um, 
on the left hand side right hand side of the truck but the left hand side as we're looking at it the light bulb coming out actually broke um, and I had to pull it out uh, pull it out with some pliers uh, the thing out of the socket and then getting the new light bulbs back into the sockets they wouldn't seat and I ended up having to modify them and I'll sh but I'll show that to you I'll show you what I had to do to the bulb to modify it um, and what the bulbs were they were Napa bulbs but uh, they're made I, I forgot who makes them but anyway I'll bring you back and show that to you okay the, here are the bulbs out of the truck now uh, let me show you what I had to do to it to modify it as you can see the first bulb that I took out it actually broke trying to get it out but let me show you on this one this sits on that like that <clears throat> on the new bulbs there's these slide things and what I had to do is take a pair of wire cutters and snip this at an angle so that it came up and the same way with this both of these on this side when you try to push this in put the new bulb into the socket there's a like a rubber grommet on the bottom of it and you kind of push it down into that rubber grommet and then uh, turn it um, and this is on the plug the electrical plug so you push it down into that rubber grommet and I'm sorry not turn it but there's a um, snap pin that goes over this post um, so you push it down into the rubber grommet and then you're able to slide the the slide to, locks this into the post there but it would not go down far enough it wouldn't even go down far enough before I notched them at an angle it wouldn't even go down far enough that you were in contact with that rubber grommet so as soon as I I did that notch these things at an angle um, it worked fine went in there just fine um, had to push now if anybody wants to know that bulb number it's it's a Napa and that's a B uh, BP 900 8 NV B2 dash N and there was two of them now the first one that I pushed in um, I tried to push it in before I figured out that you had to notch them things and let me I'll explain to you how I had to notch it. I pushed so hard that I actually broke this thing um, and I took that broken bulb back that was one of the new bulbs I took that broken bulb back and uh, they replaced it they gave me another bulb in replacement of it um, but um, what we what I did was actually um, took a paint marker and marked the bottom of this and then pushed it down in to find out where it was making contact or not making contact and it was not it would not go down far enough to make contact it showed up on the paint marker be, until I notched those things and then after I notched them of course it slid in but um, that's what I did is just took a paint marker to kind of figure out why it wouldn't bottom out if you held these things the new one and the this one the old one up to each other they looked identical um, but we tried to that paint marker and it's you know we just couldn't figure it out and finally i just said well um what what i had done first is stuck a screwdriver in here because i thought maybe it was not allowing it to go up in there and i was going to try and open it and it just cracked that out um and then it still wouldn't go in so i said you know as long as it, it's damaged anyways let me just try and and bevel it down and that worked so if you ever run into this problem with a uh, Dodge Ram 2500 getting the bulb to go back into the electrical socket there's the the clue or there's the secret you gotta just bevel them tabs off I, I cut them off with a pair of uh, tin not tin snips electrical wire cutters and uh, but I mean, you could probably have done the same thing with a file. You could have just filed it down at an angle.
So those bulbs, I, I had gone to Napa. Sylvania makes a bulb, and let's call a, a original bulb or an original style bulb an incandescent bulb because it's not LED, it's not halogen, it's not any of the other things that they came out with. But anyways, I went to uh, Napa. I had to replace that uh, running light or um, actually it's a running light turn signal. The turn signal function still worked on that burned out bulb but the uh, running light uh, was out so I had to replace that I figured that I would do the bulbs I did not want to do LED or halogen I don't like halogen or those other bulbs that they make as you look at them as you're driving towards a bulb like that it kind of uh, shifts colors and there's a pattern where there's a point where it, it almost looks like the light went out and somebody tried to explain that to me but I'm not really sure it's because that halogen or uh, whatever else they produced not LED uh, but those other bulbs that they produced before LED was uh, had a band in it where the light wave or yeah the light waves uh, you almost lost uh, light in a certain area a uh, very narrow band of light on those bulbs and they change color i i can't stand that where you're driving on a straight straight stretch of road and a car's coming towards you and it shifts from green to blue to um kind of whitish and uh, i just don't like it but anyways i wanted to uh replace it with those uh, incandescent higher uh, output incandescent lights and uh, Napa didn't carry Sylvania but this is Napa's answer to that Sylvania bulb um, and I think he said it was made by Wagner but anyways that's uh, I just wanted to throw that in there it's Sunday morning uh, it could be Sunday afternoon I'm leaving go to West Virginia Pittsburgh um, We've got to go to West Virginia and pick up some racks. Take it to pick Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh uh, pick up a car in Pittsburgh. Actually, a truck. Pick up a truck in Pittsburgh. Um, and then on the way back, I got to stop at Warrendale, Pennsylvania, and pick up some windows. And then deliver the uh, windows in the truck to uh, a town called Fredonia, New York. But I'm out here Sunday morning. Um, it's just snowing a little bit there. We had some snow, but it's kind of warmed up. I think it's like 33 right now. But I'm just going to uh, check the tires, um, grease the axles, grease the trailer, uh, get it prepped for going tomorrow. When I say check the tires, I, uh, air pressure, I've also got to sweep off the deck from where I picked up the uh, axle and the sleeper. There's some dirt on it. I just got to get that off of it. There wasn't, uh, I wasn't trying to get that slush off of there, or that ice off of there. There was dirt on it. Um, you can get a ticket from the DOT for that. Uh, usually they go after guys that are hauling um, heavy equipment like bulldozers, excavators and stuff in the mud there are dirt rocks that are caked up into the tracks, come off, bounce off hit cars, break windshields, but <clears throat> if you get a cop behind you, I mean, all I, I had some small stones and dirt on there. If you get a cop behind you following you and a stone happens to bounce off or a piece of dirt happens to bounce off of your trailer, you're going to get a ticket for it.
Okay, here I am in West Virginia. Gonna pick up the racks. I'm waiting for them to bring them out. Now, I picked up from this rack company before in Toronto, Ohio. Uh, that's the manufacturing plant. I'm not really sure what they do here, but it's really a strange situation. Um, this loading area is just a dirt thing, dirt pad. And um, I came in here to begin with, kind of figuring this would be where shipping and receiving is. And I went into that door over there that's open, and you can't get into the building. It's a uh, man doors locked in there. So I went back out and drove up to the office thinking there was a backside to this building where shipping and receiving is got up to the office and they sent me down through the grass to an employee door there's no sidewalk to it just walk over the grass to an employee door that employee door goes into a break room and you got to go through a ba break room go out the other door and then go down um, a Nile way and the shipping and receiving is down there. It's the most confusing place in the world. Um, but anyways, I'll show it to you when I, it's done loading. Okay, I, I put that clip in there because sometimes it's just frustrating to go to these places to pick something up or deliver something. There's no instructions. What I ended up doing is, I told you that I tried that uh, loading door um, and I, it wouldn't work. So I pulled out of there and figuring that there might be uh, shipping and receiving behind the building. So I drove up to that office area only to find that the road ended at that office area. After I went in there, I had to come back out and back out uh, probably an eighth quarter of a mile back down the road because there was no place to turn around with a truck or uh, me with a trailer there was no place to turn around and I was just kind of frustrated so I didn't show uh, that rack on the trailer I went to Pittsburgh picked up the uh, delivered the racks picked up the truck find out where they wanted the windows delivered and um, the guy had originally told me when he told me that I was picking the truck up and then I uh, had to pick up some windows in Warrendale at Pella. Um, he said, well, you, the windows, there's only 13 of them. He says, you'd probably throw them in the bed of the pickup truck or put them behind the pickup truck on, the, on your trailer. I get to Pella window and um, the first thing that we figure out is one or two of these windows are like 48 by 108 inches long and uh, weigh over 200 pounds a piece. And the guy says, well, we can probably uh, slip them underneath that pickup truck and you're just going to have to move them out, um, have help to move them out because they're pretty heavy. So we go out to the warehouse guy, and the warehouse guy says, yeah, we could put them under that pickup truck, but he says, you're not supposed to transport windows laying down flat. He says, there's a good possibility that they will break, especially in cold weather laying down. He says, you have to transport windows sitting up on edge or on the bottom, on the side, something like that. Hang on. Okay, so anyways, after the interruption, um, I, I called uh, the guy that wanted the windows and told him what they said, you know, that it would be his responsibility if we were to lay him down on the trailer and they broke. And he says, well, never mind picking the windows up. I don't really need them right away anyway, so uh, just never mind. So anyways, the window thing got put off and... Um, it was just kind of a frustrating day. I'm not going to show you any of it, but uh, let's go on to other things here in the shop. Just as kind of a, like a, an amusing little shop update, I got this rear axle that I had gotten for the front of the uh, haul truck. It's a new axle that's got disc brakes on it, and um, the hubs for the... Um, 
bud wheels, 22 fives. But what I was gonna do is uh, jack it up and put it on a jack stand, um, except the jack stand won't support it. What it does is it kind of rolls off of it because the center of gravity on the the axle is offset. It's not uh, it's it's not uh, directly over the center of the axle. So when I put it on, I can jack it up. But when I uh, jack it up and then put it on the jack stand, what happens is that it uh, rolls. Now see what I did on this axle, it's a square tube axle on the rear axle. And I just had these stands laying around that I um, just put a piece of channel iron in it and it holds it just fine. Um, but I'll, I'll probably gonna have to come up with something to hold this up. I'm waiting for the mule bolts. I, I suppose, now nah, I don't want to, I'd rather get the wheels off of it, see if uh, what condition the rotors and brakes are in um, before I start putting it on the truck and have to uh, jack the truck around to work on all of this stuff. Um, let me just uh, see what I can come up with here. It's part of a shop update, and <clears throat> it is kind of related to the haul truck, but let me keep it as a shop update. <clears throat> I went out to uh, Lowe's today and bought some <clears throat> foam panels. Um, now, they're called project foam and they seem more dense the foam seems more dense than regular foam and let me tell you what I'm going to do in the haul truck series I had talked about the intake manifold and possibly um, forming one out of carbon fiber so what I did was went out and got these panels and I'm going to try and make a mold and see what the mold will come out like um, to form it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it as, as part of a shop update uh, because actually <clears throat> the haul truck is becoming too involved and I don't want to get things like this inserted into the actual build of the truck or modification. So I'll build the mold as part of a shop update. So um, I've got, I got the foam, um, foam panels. Uh, some contact cement and uh, one of these little uh, rasp type things to use to help form it <clears throat> but I will as I do it I will bring you back okay I'm over here in the back side of my shop and I, you have to excuse me but I thought I had filmed this and went into detail about it only I can't find it so whether I had clicked the camera on it didn't turn on and I discuss this in a video I'm not really sure part of a shop update I showed you that front axle and told you that I had the, uh, these two stands on the rear axle so what I'm gonna do is try and weld two studs coming out of one of these stands and uh, encompass it into those holes on the front axle so it'll keep it from twisting okay so what I'm going to do is just uh, square up two of the studs. Um, that's five, so two and a half. I'll draw a center line across it. And that's where my studs have got to be. Let me get a couple of pieces of a half inch all thread rod. They've got to be about six inches long. What I've got is three eighths by six inch bolts. Um, I'm going to use them because it'll give me more slop in the holes uh, for alignment purposes, just so that I it's easier to align it without having to <clears throat> get the half inch rod more precise. And I had these already pre-cut or in the bolt box. But anyways, I'm just going to tack them on. I'll show it to you. 
and then I'll take you over and show you uh, setting the axle up on top of it. One of the things I'm going to have to do is uh, just grind up a little spot for the ground clamp on there. But uh, I'll, I'll do that off camera and then bring you back and show you tacking. Might have wondered why I'm doing this down on the floor. It's because this yellow paint that's on here, I don't know whether it's epoxy, what it is. But that shit gets all over the place when you grind it off and um, I didn't want it all over the top of my welding table. See what I mean about that yellow paint? And I even brushed it off my shirt already. Okay, I got it jacked up. It was kind of a chore because it keeps wanting to spin on that jack, but let me see if I can get it down onto them studs. Okay, so there was my solution for keeping that axle from rolling. I'll just put the other side up on the jack stand. Okay, so I went to jack the other side up and again, it's extremely off center of gravity and it just rolled over but those uh, six inch, three inch bolts. Got a, we'll go to plan B or C or something, but I'll figure something out here. Well, at least the tax held, Raj just spent. Okay, just briefly about this axle. During the video, what I said is I, I regretted using the 3 8 rod. Why I did that is it provided so much slop in the holes. <clears throat> and I didn't nut this on the top, which I should have. So what it does is because the center of gravity is offset, it just started rolling up off of this thing. Um, now if I had used bigger rod and nutted it, it probably wouldn't have done that. But uh, it did it, uh, and what I've decided to do now is just wait for them U-bolts. I'm gonna bolt it onto the truck and as I'm rebuilding the engine, I can jack the front of it up and uh, uh, pull the tires off and uh, just uh, check brakes, stuff like that, while it's on the truck. It was a good thought, though. I guess. Too bad I didn't think it through, though. One of the things that I'm doing as part of a shop update, um, or letting you know what I'm doing as part of a shop update, I've got this old battery here. It's a 12 volt battery, and it's not really that old. Um, okay. Maybe that's a date on a 412. But it, I think it came out of my wife's old truck. So um, what I'm doing is charging it up. And I'm going to be trying, I have this tester here. It's a power probe, actually. And I was kind of hoping to wring out some of these wires on the sleeper to see if I could get them fired up or if I could get... Uh, the lights to work or anything like that. Now what I'm running into is that wiring diagram that I got. Um, I got a wiring diagram from Peterbilt for this sleeper. But the wiring colors really don't match what's on the wiring diagram. So, um, but I think my issue right now is trying to figure out whether green on here is a ground wire or if they're using a common ground to the um, sleeper shell itself so what I've got to do is kind of get up there 
I'm going to pull one of the lights out and see if I can figure out what wiring color that they've used on one of the lights and how the ground is hooked up. If it's a ground, a common ground to the sleeper or they've actually got two wires run to it. Okay, in a previous clip in this video, I, I told you about uh, going to Lowe's and getting these project panels. They're, they're actually kind of a high density foam insulation type of panel. They call them project panels. But anyways, um, I told you that I was going to include this in the shop update. I, I'm not. I Because it's going to become very involved and there's a lot of things that uh, have to do with it. Um, about the strength requirements for it and the forces that are going to be applied upon it so what I'm going to do is take these panels and the building of the mold and the forming uh, building the carbon fiber um, intake manifold um, into its own kind of series what I am going to be doing, though, is, as you've seen in other shop updates, uh, I started making this uh, uh, seal intake, um, l let's call it the flange part of it, the seal intake for building a, a seal intake for the uh, intake manifold. Um, I am going to continue on that, I, even though I might not use it. Um, I'm uh, still going to build it so that I have it and uh, just to make sure or just to see that I can build it and what kind of a design concept I can come up with out of steel. Um, I, I had told you in a previous video that uh, you need a lot of uh, shaping tools for metal to kind of form it the way that I wanted to. Well. Let's see what I can come up with, and I will show you that in, in shop updates also. I don't think I would put that as its own project. Like, I am going to do the uh, building of the mold for the carbon fiber intake, but I will show you uh, the progress on it. Um, probably this is going to take priority over this, and there I've got a lot to do on that haul truck, so um, this might be something in the future but um, priority is going to be the carbon fiber okay that's going to do it as far as this shop update goes um, I, I do promise you that the toolbox thing will be coming uh, that end cabinet is being built and I should have it um, and then after I do get it get it installed I will give you a toolbox tour but Anyways, that'll do it for this shop update. Thanks for watching, guys. Hit that like button. Subscribe.